let's bring the city of Marine <laughs> City Commission. Uh, regular meeting Thursday, September 19th, 7 p.m. Let's please uh, take a moment of silence for our dearly departed. And let's please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Roll call, please. Commissioner Vanna Bosch. Here. Commissioner Bryson. Here. Commissioner Hendricks. Here. Commissioner Kellyanne. Here. Commissioner Clawson. Here. Commissioner Merchant. Here. Commissioner Burkhammer. Here. City Manager Lovett. Here. All right, now can I get a motion to approve the agenda? Commissioners, just because we're dealing with a new format on your um, agenda, when you're going to approve the agenda, now would be the time if you want to remove anything from consent agenda, now is when you do it, and it would become 11A, 11B, or 11C, as however many you remove. But you do that when you're approving the agenda. Okay, I'd like to make a motion to... Um remove or move A and B to 11 so we can further discuss. So they become 11 A and B? Surely. Then could we also move C to discuss that? Mm -hmm. Having now removed what folks <coughs> want removed, then the next motion would be to act on the consent agenda as a whole. But don't we have to act to prove it? I'm sorry, when you get to the consent agenda, when, yes. then you act on it as a whole. So there right. won't be any questions in, on the consent agenda. If you have a question on anything in the consent agenda. It, it comes out now. Yes. So if anybody has any more questions in that grouping, we need to pull it out now. If everyone's good, then can I get a motion to approve the agenda <coughs> with the A, B, and C removed. So moved. Support. Any questions on that? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Moving on to public comment. Anyone in attendance is welcome to address the city commission. Please state your name and address. Please limit your comments to five minutes. This is your time for you to raise issues for the commission. The commission will not respond, but issues will be followed upon as necessary. Hi, Laura Scotch at 430 South Water Street. I'm here to talk about two things. Um, first, um, on behalf of the Historic Society and Heather Bachram, I would like to invite the commission mayor um, tomorrow to the ribbon cutting for the mosaics, um, followed by a small gathering at um, the Mariner Theater. So I, I believe the invitation was in your packet, but in case anybody missed it, um, I hope you guys can be there. Ribbon cutting will be in Drake Park at 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock. Good? Okay. Okay, Joe and I are here to talk to you a little bit about the Community, uh, community and Economic Development Board update. Um, today we had um, a subcommittee meeting um, consisting of Joe Moran, um, Bob Klingler, and myself, and we met regarding two things that are on our agenda. One of it is transient docking, which um, Joe will be talking about, and um, also about mooring on the St. Clair River um, where the uh, outside of Lighthouse Park. Um, this mooring would be for tall ships and other larger vessels. Um, we have secured a donor um, to pay for a mooring permit application through the state of Michigan. Um, um, and that will also, and that is going to be submitted by Robert Bryson, a champion Marine. Um, this permit, or this approval of the permit, will allow our board the necessary information and the next step to devise a plan to present to the city commission in the near future for that mooring area. 
And then Joe is here to talk a little bit about um, some other things we discussed. Hello, everybody. Uh, going around are some pictures of the, the areas that uh, are being discussed tonight, both the mooring area outside uh, by the lighthouse and the area on the Bell River. Um, back when the TIFA subcommittee was in session, uh, I got together with Paul Gallus, who is the owner of the uh, Clinton River Cruise Boats, and uh, Phil Perkowski, who is the owner of the warehouse slash inside storage uh, on the Bell River. And as that subcommittee was being disbanded, we kind of dropped off the talks. Uh, we're in the process now of reopening uh, those discussions with the two gentlemen. I know Mr. Gallus is very eager uh, to do something about bringing the Clinton River boat to Marine City. I uh, haven't talked to uh, Mr. Kowski yet, but I should be back to him tomorrow. The um, idea would be to get those guys together, have them make some kind of arrangement to uh, bring the Clinton River boat to Marine City, and also to get a start hopefully on one or two trains of wells on that property. So we'll keep you posted on how that goes, but I, I think that's going to happen real soon. Thanks very much. Anyone else like to speak? Yes. Hi, my name is Pat McFarland, 316 Bell River. I got had a few couple issues that uh, I'd like to see what's going on about with the city. Back in November, statewide had a thing for marijuana recreational, you know, and everybody voted for it. It got approved. The city's approval was 61. Point Three, I think. I don't have the numbers on me. I, they got thrown away. That was a 61% of the city, of the voters of Marine City, 21 and over, approved for recre recreational marijuana. 486 more, I think it is, than what the entire people voted on their millage, on their taxes. That don't make sense to me. I mean, that's a lot of people, all right? And yet you guys go and vote no re retail business in the city of, of Marine City. If everybody said they wanted to smoke a joint in the front room, <coughs> wouldn't it be convenient or money-wise for them to stay within the city limits? Everybody's saying buy local, buy local. What you gonna buy local? You gotta go to Ann Arbor. Or Detroit so you can still legally bring it back home and smoke it you guys are you know missing big tax revenue you all know that look at Colorado look at Washington Oregon then uh, you know and you're supposed to be representing the city of Marine it's, uh, it's like going against the people's wishes. In my my book, the way I see it, that's the way you want to go. Uh, I had an issue with that fishing deck that I've got, that I had built. I've already talked to Elaine about it and that's all taken care of. Having to pay the, the high school band to march in your parade what the heck is up with that? Where is their city spirit and pride that they've got to be paid to participate in something for the city when they have a parade? I think you only have, what, one or two parades, and that's about it. Uh, gentlemen, there's another thing. I mean, yeah, I dress like a slab, you know. I don't have to 
represent nobody but me. But you guys represent the city. Dress like it. Wear a tie. If you got a jacket, wear that. Yeah, I know we're inside. You don't need a jacket, but, you know. It's like a dress code thing when back in high school. I hate that. And uh, you got a great spot down there at Bell River with, with the big bridges. You know, the new one? It's on the north side and the northwest side of it. That would be a great spot for a little park. There's already a lifesaver ring down there, I noticed. But for like a kayak launch, picnic table, maybe even a grill, you know? And, well, it's, everything's new nowadays, so it's got to be <coughs> ADA, you know, compliant and all that. Oh. Uh, when it comes to fixing the Bell River, uh, Bell River Road, them guys are going to have fun because a lot of it needs to be shored up because of the uh, erosion from the river. I mean, the, the road is actually sinking into the river, slowly but surely. And the cell phone poles are starting to lean. I noticed that sitting up there on that deck, you know, every day, look at it. Eh, they haven't leaned more yet, you know. Waiting for them to fall almost. Uh, well, while I'm at it, this city hall thing, I know, it's like a kick of a dead horse. If the high school kids can get that thing squared away to where they can use it, those are teenagers. This is a cotton picking city. You think we'd be able, the city would be able to do it? We. Okay. Thank you. Sorry if I took <coughs> blew off too much wind. <coughs> Anyone else like to speak? Hearing none, moving on to approval of the uh, <coughs> City Commission regular meeting minutes, September 5th. Make a motion to approve the City Commission regular meeting minutes of September 5th. Second. Motion second. Any corrections or deletions on the minutes? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Moving on to the consent agenda. Minus A, B, and C. I'll make a motion. We approve the consent agenda letters D through N. Support. Motion support. Roll call vote, please. Commissioner Bryson. Yes. Commissioner Hendricks. Yes. Commissioner Callahan. Yes. Commissioner Clausen. Yes. Commissioner Merchant. Yes. Commissioner Burkhamen. Yeah. Mayor Vandebosch. Yes. Motion carries. All right, moving on to financial business disbursements, including payroll for $2,483,528.50. I'll make a motion. We approve the disbursements, including payroll for two million four hundred eighty-three thousand five hundred and twenty-eight dollars and ten cents. Support. Questions on. <clears throat> it. No questions. Hearing none. Roll call vote, please. Commissioner Hendrick. Yes. Commissioner Callahan. Yes. Commissioner Clausen. Yes. Commissioner Yes. Commissioner Yes. Mayor Vandebosch. Yes. Commissioner Bryson. Yes. All right. Then moving on to un well, we have no unfinished business, so we're moving on to new business. Seawall uh, repair bid. <coughs> Mike. So. Oh. Um. No. You got it. That's fine. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if any of you are aware. I would assume probably most of you are. The seawall south of city offices is. Pretty low, and we've had water coming over the seawall. Uh, we worked on getting a bid last year, and we only got one. We tried to get more competitive bids, and never heard back from anyone, unfortunately. So this year we tried 
getting the bids again and reconfirming the previous one that we had. And Mike's been out there chasing everyone. Whenever he'd see a barge in town, he'd chase after people, <coughs> trying to call and, and getting a hold of them. And unfortunately, they really are just not responding at all. Uh, we do have one bed before us. This is all that he's been able to procure. And this is even far out of the reach of most of the normal seawall contractors. Obviously, they're very busy right now. I understand that the backlog at Army Corps is pretty significant for permits as well. And uh, what we're looking for here, we have a bid and we're looking to waive competitive bids and move forward and approve this so that we can get this taken care of. I make a motion to um, waive competitive bidding and approve. Uh, oh, just mm -mm, two. Stop right there. Whoops. Two separate motions. One at a time. You, you were perfect. Waive competitive bidding. Period. <laughs> Period. Support. <coughs> motion support. Any questions on waiving just the competitive bids? Yes. I was just, I mean, this is the only person that's responded. There's no one else that's even had an inkling. We have tried contacting so many people over the last year, and this is all we can get. What's this compared to an, a bid from the past on fixing a seat I mean, is it? it it's in line with costs. I mean, unfortunately, because these contractors, it's something that everybody needs mm -hmm. um, they can ask a premium and right now even mechanical fabricating who's making a lot of the seawall cap can't keep up mm -hmm. and they're just barely keeping up with just orders so and I don't know how much more they're taking on so yeah, I, even the material right <coughs> now is starting to get harder to get you probably run into that too down yes there. I get it out of Louisiana and Canada now with the high water situation. Have we tried somebody from Canada? Can they? I don't believe we've tried anyone from Canada. Um, more than likely, there would be some additional issues to deal with there. Okay, I'm just, you know, yeah. I can see him. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they'd come over. <laughs> All right. The motion is on the waiving the competitive bidding. Does anyone have any more questions or concerns on waiving competitive bids? Hearing none, roll call vote, please. Commissioner Callahan. Yes. Commissioner Clausen. Yes. Commissioner Merchant. Yes. Commissioner Burkhamen. Yes. Mayor Vandenbosch. Yes. Commissioner Bryson. Yes. Commissioner Hendrick. Yes. Motion carries. Now we need a motion to actually do the project. With the cost. With the cost. I'd like to make a motion to accept the bid from Ron's Marine uh, for our seawall repair for the price of $5,984. Support. Any questions on this, Lisa? Um, the only question I have is I see here extension can only be installed when the water level drops and that could be some time. So he is gonna hold this price for us for how long? <laughs> Cause I mean, it might be a while. I know, I know. The did he put a spec? Was there? There was no spec specification. How long I, he was going? We don't hold even it. know how long it's going to take to get a permit. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So hopefully he'll keep the price. I think permitting right now has been running three to four months for a commercial seawall. Yeah. Okay. That was it. Any other questions? Hearing none, roll call. Vote again, please. Uh, Commissioner Clausen. Yes. Commissioner Merchant. Yes. Commissioner Burkhamen. Yes. Mayor Vandenbosch. Yes. Commissioner Bryson. Yes. Commissioner Hendrick. Yes. Commissioner Callahan. Yes. Motion carries. All right, moving on to uh, interview room update or upgrades. install the camera system and that same camera system still remains it's outdated um, if 
if we have an interview in there and I need to download it to send it to the prosecutor, it takes three hours on my end to download. Then I got to put it onto a disk, make arrangements in order to get it to the prosecutor. It's, it's just very, um, it's, it's just not good in lack of better terms. So with, with the upgrade of our body cameras and an in-car camera, GTAC provides this system. We can upgrade everything. The interview room or the interview is conducted. A click of a button we can send to the prosecutor and within five seconds the prosecutor has it. Um, it it's just a seamless transition for us and it's time to upgrade that, that, this project. Chief, what's the annual renewal cost on this? It's one hundred eighty dollars. So that that's that, just the cloud storage. Yep, that's all. So for. there's no, we won't be needing to up the budget next year for anything for this part of it. No. Sir. Okay. And you want to use G Tech because that's what we use for the body cameras and. Then. Correct. Okay. It, what what that'll do is that'll give us the ability, like if we have a major case, any in car video associated with that with the body camera. Subsequently to an interview, we can all put it under one file and ship it all in one where it's not pieced out. It's it's viewable. It's just a seamless <coughs> transition. I make a motion that we waive competitive bidding for the GTAC system. Support. Any questions <laughs> on waiving competitive bids? Good. Okay. Roll call vote, please. Commissioner Merchant. Yes. Commissioner Burkhamen. Yes. Mayor Vandenbosch. Yes. Commissioner Bryson. Yes. Commissioner Hendricks. Yes. Commissioner Callahan. Yes. Commissioner Clawson. Yes. Motion All right. I'll make a motion that we approve the GTEC system for six thousand two hundred forty dollars and ninety-seven cents. Support. Motion support. Any any further questions on the system? Hearing none, roll call vote, please. Commissioner Burkhamley. Yes. Mayor Vandabosch. Yes. Commissioner Bryson. Yes. Commissioner Hendrick. Yes. Commissioner Callahan. Yes. Commissioner Flossen. Yes. Commissioner Merchant. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Next, we're moving on to Staff and Command School. So I've done a lot of research on, on the Staff and Command Schools. Um, the three big ones that I've talked to all my mentors are, are Eastern, Michigan State University, and Northwestern. Um, after doing all the research, I found that it's more cost efficient to attend the Northwestern one, which is held right at Troy. Um, at that point, I think the only thing we'll be paying for is gas to, you know, to and from. But if you go to these other schools, you're gonna have to, you know, you'll have to get per diems and hotels and such. So I am, I'm coming before you tonight asking for permission to go to the Northwestern school. How long is the class? About six months. It's two weeks on, two weeks off. It's a great program. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to it. I've no, I, I don't know anybody that's gone to the Northwestern one, but they, a lot of my guys went to Eastern and the MSU one. I, I attended the first line supervision one at Michigan State, and that was great, great course. One of the best ones I've ever been to. I learned a lot about myself. Um, along with you know how to be that first line supervision you know supervisor, and I really wanted to go to the Michigan State one, just to kind of I knew what that one was all about, but I'm trying to look out for this you know the city and not spend that money on hotel room and the per diems and stuff. So, I like I appreciate that you thought of that in your decision for this. So, thank you, ma'am. So six months and you got to do a lot of homework. A lot of, a lot, yeah. a lot of homework. Yeah. From what I'm hearing is there's a 20 page paper at some point in time that I'm so looking forward to. <laughs> yes, there is. <laughs> I can help you again with that, Chief. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that again. So since it was in the budget, we just have to make a yeah. motion for this. Mm -hmm. We'll make a motion that we approve for the chief to attend Northwestern University Staff and Command School at a cost of $4,250. Support. Any other questions on this? Hearing none, roll call vote, please. Mayor Vandebosch. Yes. Commissioner Bryson. Yes. Commissioner Hendricks. Yes. Commissioner Callahan. Yes. Commissioner Clawson. Yes. Commissioner Merchant. Yes. 
Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. All right, now we're moving back to item 11A. 11A. Uh, department head resignation letter from Susan Wilk. The person who had it removed would take the lead on mm -hmm. this uh, topic. That would be me. I'd like to read something that I wrote um, regarding these resignations. As an elected official, I pride myself on being a member of a team that works together for the greater good of Marine City. Unfortunately, that team has taken a wrong turn. The city just received two department manager resignations. We are losing valuable city employees because of the callous and disrespectful way they are being treated. This has to stop. I have heard countless accounts of intimidation, aggression, and outright bullying at the hands of one of our city commissioners, which undermines the dignity of the staff. At the last staff meeting, or I'm sorry, at the last meeting, some of us were being accused of just being a vote on the city commission seat. We all take our role as city commissioners very seriously, but one person is taking this role to a ridiculous level to the point where there is a blatant abuse of power. Again, this has to stop before more resignations occur and we lose the respect of our tax-paying citizens. Since I am a problem solution person, my solution is this. We need to set term limits for our city commissioners. Term limits are commonplace in many other Michigan municipalities. The normal term is two four-year terms for a city commissioner. In order to do this, we must change our charter and put it up for a vote. A vote. We need to initiate this change. Secondly, we need to put a stop to the endless requests for information that only one commissioner supposedly needs. The needs of our city should come first, not the needs of a commissioner. The same city commissioner that claims to be the only one who saves taxpayer money is the only one that is frivolously spending the most taxpayer dollars with requests for information that take up the time and efforts of many city employees. Let me say this again. This is costing our taxpayers money and it needs to stop. These requests for information are not required by any other member of the city commission to do their job. Some requests are very confidential in nature and should be flatly denied without further debate. My solution is simple. Any request for information needs to have this criteria. A request for information should be in writing so we can track such requests and also track how many city employee hours are spent researching these requests. Number two, requests for information need to be approved by two or more city commissioners since such requests should be verified as needed by all city commissioners to do their job properly. Our city employees and department managers do a fantastic job. Our job as city commissioners is to help with policy. The department managers are responsible to enforce procedure with their employees. We cannot blur this line and micromanage our city workers. We need to praise them instead of harass them. You voted all of us in to be the watchdogs for our city and to be truthful with the information we give. I, for one, am not going to sit back and watch this abuse of power any longer. We need to stay, take a stand together to make positive change. Term limits for city commissioners would be a valuable tool to help us stay focused on our future and not bury us in lies and suspicion. I'm going to finish with this management quote, never push loyal employees to the point where they no longer care. Okay. Anything else on the resignation letter? Um, I'd like to say something, too. Um, first of all, I'd like to say that I agree with um, Commissioner Burkham and, and what she said. I, I, um, I support in what she says, too. And next, I'd like, um, is just an observation or a statement. Um, I have no real solution, as um, Commissioner Burkham has given some. Mine is just definitely um, an observation and um, but a point that definitely needs to be looked into further. 
Um, after reading Susan Wilburn's res resignation, I feel that it says volumes, though it is concise. It states that there is a member or members of this commission and the ZBA that have forcefully made a person resign from their livelihood. To me, that sounds like bullying or harassment. A commissioner cannot go directly to a head of department to discuss things. It's against our city charter. But even deeper than that, if what is stated is actually true, then it is malevolent. It's deliberate act of forcefully manipulating a person into doing what the aggressor wants. Susan states in her letter that she felt pressured to selectively enforce making her to do things that were unethical. She states that the nature of her job does not always make members of the community happy, but when talking with people uh, that the building official Susan has worked with, an overwhelmingly agreement was that she did her job and they got along with her. In making it sound to me that if the commissioner or commissioners that she indicated in her letter that they have their own agenda and they were trying to accomplish that by forcefully making her do things she didn't want. Once again, I feel that these in, in, indictments need to be, or these incidents, I feel that these incidents need to be looked into further and those who are involved need to be held accountable for making a person give up their livelihood and their job. Any other comments? <clears throat> I'd yeah. like to just parrot, sorry, what uh, Cheryl and Paula both said. I completely agree with you. I'd just like to add that we should not be micromanaging our department heads and our city employees. They are there because we have the trust in them that they know how to do their job. You know, if, if we don't trust them to do their job, then maybe they don't need to be there anymore and we need to look for someone else. But we shouldn't be taking up their time nitpicking everything they do. We should trust them that they have the knowledge and the professional discipline, per se, to basically do their job and produce results. I'm going to, like Jake and Cheryl and Paul all said, I'm, I'm, and Jake just said it, I'm going to parrot the same thing. I mean, we have, we have to allow our people to do their jobs. And if we've hired them to do a job, that means that we've trusted them to do a job. And we cannot handcuff them by telling them what we think they should be doing, telling them that they need to be doing something else, and just basically micromanaging them every day. If they're not doing their job, then we need to handle it another way. We need, I mean, there's, there's ways of dealing with that if they're not doing their job. Um, I, I went in and I said to, to Susan, I said, I hate to see you go. And she says, I just can't do my job. I cannot do my job. And to hear, she was not saying she is not capable of doing that job. She's telling me that she's not allowed to do her job. And that speaks volumes because what it's telling me is I don't care who we put in that position, the same thing is going to happen. So if we want things to change, we got to stop it and we got to fix it. So, you know, we just, we got we to gotta work together as a team. We got a good team here. We have a good, we have a good crew of employees. I don't care, I don't care if they're beach attendants, I don't care if they're our city manager all the way through. They're good employees and we have to support them and trust that they're doing their jobs. We can't take up countless hours of their day with lists and, and, and requests that, that are just taking up time. We can't keep adding to their list because if we want things checked off their list, they'll get them checked off if we let them check them off and get the job done. All right, I'm going to say something here. I wasn't going to say anything, but when I have issues brought to me from the people of the community, I do not go to the department head because that's not who we're supposed to take the issues to. I take my issues directly to Elaine. She knows that, and I let her deal with whatever the issues are. I've never gone to Susan. 
I've never directed her, and I don't think anybody else on this board has ever done that. <coughs> do anything. Um, I'd like to hear what these so-called allegations are, because I know that all the issues that we bring, and I know I bring to Elaine, are all normal, everyday issues that people bring to me, I bring to her, she takes to the department head, and that's the chain of command, and that's the way it's supposed to be. We also have, in our policies and procedures, a process that if this person felt so terrible, should use the process in our policies and procedures. But we all have a job to do, and asking for information is a big part of that job, because you're not in there day after day after day with them, so the only way you can know is to ask for questions. It doesn't cost a lot of money for the majority of the questions that are ever asked or the information. It's all normal, day-to-day -day business of the city. If you're going to start tying it down that tight, you're just going to make a big nightmare even for yourselves if you want to get information. But I think in this particular case, um, if this person had so many issues, then there was a process in place that, my opinion, should have gone through our city manager. So, again, anything I've ever brought for her are from other people or issues that all go to her. So I don't know what all this is about. So I don't have any clue as to who she claims on the commission, but I don't buy it. I'm sorry. Well, I, I've kind of talked to her, but I think that she's also relating to past commissioners. Yeah, that's what I think, too. And, uh, and I, I've, I've heard it over and over, and I won't say names, but I think we got a new board now, and we just have to get together. So I have a question for you, Elaine. So the resignation for, from um, Mary Ellen McDonald. Mm -hmm. She just states in here that she um, is going to enjoy retirement. But I was told that she would have stuck around a little bit for, for a little, little bit more of time if it wasn't for being micromanaged. Is that true? You know, I've had conversations with her, and it's been difficult throughout the years. I think she has had a difficult relationship with some board members, and, you know, that's certainly one of the reasons that I think added to her desire to resign. Mm -hmm. well, let's remember, she retired once and then came back. And so. well, let's stay on A. Yep. Any more comments on the resignation of uh, building inspector? And I, I, I don't know if it if this pertains to and if it doesn't stop me please but I just hope that when we do bring in a person or a crew of people because I think it's going to take a crew to replace her now the way we're going to do this that we give them the authority to do the job to do the job that needs to be done to get out and enforce code and enforce ordinances and and do what they need to do that's all because that's that that's that's a huge part of that job let me interject a little bit we have and elaine and i we've actually had to limit what she could enforce at times because we had some issues with our ordinance and that was frustrating for her. you know she's mentioned it in fact but it's an old city with a lot of antiquated and we're trying to update them so that they're not conflicting and until we get some more of the changes it's still in to enforce equally we had to get these updated and it wasn't it was somewhat frustrating for at the point where we are at in the new ordinances so that is some of the issue too because we didn't let her enforce some of them because there was conflicts in the ordinance book in itself, as we've been trying to eliminate, but we, we eliminate some when we find more. So some of the uh, issues did arise through that selective enforcement. Anything else on this? Do we need to pet? 
to accept this. Okay. I need a motion to accept your resignation. So moved. Support. Motion support. Any other questions or concerns? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Moving on to Mary Ellen McDonald's resignation. Any questions or concerns on this one? Hearing none, can I get a motion to accept? So moved. Support. One last time, any questions or concerns? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Gary. Moving on to the, this would be for See. the special event permit for yeah. Veterans Village USA. I asked to have this put back in only because I have some major concerns of people in the, in the intersection, street intersections. And I think as a board, we need to discuss it. I don't think it's something I want. I don't want to turn them down on this because, but if we're gonna have, they mentioned uh, high school and college age kids collecting in the street. I mean, I'm, I cringe when I see our old newsboys and most of them have been in the area for most of their lives. Mm -hmm. And uh, without having the experience to be out in those streets, uh, it, it just seems it's, I don't like my firemen out and our police officers out in the road way more than they have to be. Because people just, there's a lot of disconnect when people are driving. Didn't I issue an opinion on this? They reversed it too. Uh, Attorney General Schutte did yeah. issue, and then ran for governor. So then yeah. he reversed it. <laughs> as long as they had insurance. Yeah, Lisa, you had some. Um, I know where you're coming from because being an old Newsboys member, um, Chartier and Parker is the scariest intersection to have to <laughs> collect from. We usually send George Bukowski down there and. Um, George makes it, but that's the worst one. The other two intersections aren't as bad. Um, they're not as congested. And so I don't know if, and we've worked on the other ones there. That's the worst one out of the, out of all your ones. I don't know if you could limit it to just that one. Because with the trucks and that, it's very, very dangerous, yes. It is. But the other ones aren't so bad. 24th of 26, what date, is that, a, is that in the middle of the week? I have yeah. Today. Well, the 26th we just looked up was a Thursday. Oh, yeah, um, that's right. Yeah. It, uh, as a legal, do we have any recourse to ask them not to do it? Or maybe, like... You can impose rules on it, and you could probably impose uh, age on it. Maybe have it be uh, nobody under 21. And, um, you know, it's, it's cutting... I was just hoping maybe we were going to get somebody here from the organization so we can actually communicate with them. But I, yes, Bill. Is it going to be on M29? Oh, yeah. State Highway? It's got it's shark tier in M29. Yeah. yeah. Got that. When we did the run, we had to get uh, permission from the state. To be I, think that, the road. I don't think they need, I don't think they need that. Um, I mean, I truly support their, what they're trying to do. It's just, I, I, I I don't want to see somebody run over because we've even seen firemen that are out collecting with the boot project and they get hit. And it, I, like Lisa, you see you, you're either at VG's or at the bank and well, or at the, one of the grocery stores. Yeah. But I've done this this corner, and I'm telling you, with the trucks and the traffic in that turn lane, it's really really scary. You're watching your front and back. You can't see. Yeah. Especially now with it's as very many difficult. gravel trains as we've got going. Yeah, it's. It's scary. I mean, you could probably approve it subject to certain locations only. Yeah. yeah, why don't we ask instead of using this, which is the worst one there is, that maybe mm -hmm. they can use the other two? Because the one at the old city hall is a very good location, and so is the one right here at um, West Boulevard. And they really aren't as bad because you don't have all that truck traffic in there. That's just the worst one. 
That's uh, a lot of that truck traffic's going up to the plant. It's isn't still it? not too bad because they're coming the other direction, depending on what corner you're standing there. But just it's limit the locations. Yeah, okay. I would just stay away from the one down. Could we there. just stay off of South Parker? Would be my suggestion. Use Broadway. You know, Broadway and South Main. And yeah. Give them Broadway and M29. Yeah. Yeah. That's not a bad and just cause area. The the. And I know the speeds aren't there, but the amount of vehicles in mm -hmm. here. And it's so hard for because if they walk from one corner to another in traffic to get a donation, because yeah. I've seen them do it. And yeah, they've only asked for the one location. All we have to do is move mm -hmm. it, you know. And I'd just. Can I get a motion to adjust it? I'd make a motion that we adjust it to um, Main and Broadway. Support. Any other questions on it? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. <coughs> City Manager's report. Let's see. Um, the sludge return pump is up and running at the wastewater treatment plant. The water plant High service pump is installed and back in service. The pads for the columbariums have been poured at the cemetery. Uh, at this point, there were three that were poured. We're just going to be moving forward with one, and the other two will be there for space to grow in the future. Uh, we were not successful with our property dispute in court. Um, I don't know if you want to speak on that at all. Well, it was, right a, it was an interesting oral argument in front of. Uh, Judge Kelly, but essentially it boiled down to the fact that the city offices through our county assessing relationship did have the correct address for this individual. And um, under the law, which I told you, you know, which favors uh, uh, not, not being hard on people who didn't get notice, um, the judge found that because we had it in our office and we had sent out 17 and 18 and they were paid, and we were only foreclosing on 16, that the county didn't have anything bad to say about your city. The county took a little, a little heat from the judge saying that he just didn't think they had done enough due diligence. So we, we put forth an argument. I think the briefs got circulated. Um, the judge complimented your brief and said he was gonna keep it in his desk for future reference. <laughs> Um, which, you know, makes you feel good for about 11 minutes. Um, anyways, we came forward with an argument that once you're a bona fide purchaser and it has changed hands, that separates you from the county and that there's an avenue in the, um, in the uh, foreclosure and tax laws that allows the aggrieved party to then go to the court of claims in Lansing and recover the value of the property in terms of dollars, but not recover the property itself. Judge had never heard of that before, had his clerk research it and found out it was true, but he still couldn't get over the hump that the county missed the address. I went to your folks, uh, I think it was Wendy at um, she or assessing relationship? Yes. And she had the address. She had the right address. So. Okay. We're getting all our, <laughs> we're submitting an order to get our money back. So. Um, a couple other things. I met with the building official that is contracted for East China and Algonac. Spoke with him, so I'm, I'm aware of him. It's a potential option we may be pursuing to fill the gap when Susan leaves. Um, I also spent some time with Mary Ellen on payroll. We have one person in the office that knows it. Uh, she's not a department head and isn't comfortable being the only one knowing it, so I'm spending some time learning it. Um, it's very cumbersome process, unfortunately, and takes quite a while. A lot of different rules with all the different uh, contracts and everything, and pay and AFTs and everything. Um, that's pretty much all I have for now. Any questions for the city manager? Have you ever looked at contracting out payroll? It would just cost. Um, we have the position advertised for filling Mary Ellen's position, the finance director, treasurer. We've gotten quite a few applications. 
uh, working with Curtis, our auditor, to kind of review those applications, and uh, he may wind up helping us a little bit with selection. So I, I think we'll get a good candidate in place. I don't think it's going to be someone with municipal experience. I talked to Curtis a little bit about that, and um, it may be a bit of a hurdle in the beginning, but having someone with the accounting background, CPA, is really the most important at this point. Um, it's going to be a long learning curve for someone getting into the position and learning everything. There, there may be mistakes made that are going to need to be corrected. Um, we've had perfect auditing reports for the last number of years, and you know there, there may be issues with the new person coming in that needs to get up to speed with the experience. It's all about how you handle it if you make a mistake. That's certainly things that I'm going to be looking for because I know the person isn't going to be perfect day one. Uh, it's going to take a lot more time. Uh, it's something that to get into it and figure out where everything is, all the processes and procedures that we have, and potentially we'll learn that government aspect will take time. So people are going to have to bring their patience. Curtis is a great asset, though, and he's, he's helped here when uh, mm -hmm. when uh, Jen took over uh, the books here, and it was fairly flawless with his guidance. So I think with him in your corner, it should help. Yeah, I also uh, met with someone that works for an account temp agency <coughs> that is assisting St. Clair. Uh, their previous city, city manager that left also did all of their accounting. So they're helping fill a gap there. So if we do get in a position where we don't get a qualified applicant, hopefully they'll be able to help us out. Hmm. I was just thinking that just to even do the payroll portion, you know, to get that off just for a little while to kind of ease into, because I used to use a, a company called Paychecks, and you send them everything, and it was not that costly, yeah. considering well, the time. And it, it was perfect every time. Yeah, using BSNA, so... When we changed to BSNA timesheets a couple of months ago, that was quite a time saving because now we're not using another third party, having to compile the information, import it, and recheck that. So we're not having that data redundancy potential issue there. But it still is a very, very cumbersome process. There are a lot of things that have to be done, a lot of checking and double checking to make sure that you have the right numbers. Um, I am not an accounting person. It's not something that I ever signed up for, and it's, it's very complex. Mm -hmm. And it takes someone that can really focus, in essence, almost a day. Um, Mary Ellen can do it in probably less than half a day. Um, there's no way that I would be able to because I, in, in essence, will be following very specific instructions and potentially phoning a friend to help. And the more you do it, the easier it gets. I think the, the new person that's trying to learn the whole thing, wouldn't it be easier to just have payroll out? As I said, it, it would cost. What was it cost? I don't know. We can look into that. But my, my anticipation is, though, is that the person we hire will be doing it. But she doesn't know it. We don't know that. We don't know yet. We don't know that. A lot of the applications. A, mm -hmm. a lot of the applications that we received the applicants do have payroll experience. So that definitely will be something I'll be exploring during interviews. But did you, did you get any prices on it? I have no need right now. All right, any other questions for the city manager? <coughs> Here and none, we're going to move on to Commissioner Privilege and Liaison Reports. <coughs> Cheryl, you want to start us out? I have, I'm good, I have nothing. Um, just uh, want to say that um, Jennifer Vandenbosch and myself and Laura Scotcha and uh, a crew, crew have uh, once again uh, cast our spell to make Comic Con a, a thing on September 28th. That's coming up next weekend. That's this weekend. Next weekend. Next Saturday. Next Saturday. And yes, next Saturday. Thank you. And uh, just hope everybody is able to come down and enjoy um, the fun of Comic Con once again this year. That's it. 
Well, I'm liaison for the Planning Commission, and they had a meeting, and uh, Zimmerman uh, Development uh, went in the light industrial district with a private garage, uh, 50 by 100, and it went through the Planning Commission, went through the recommendation of weight and trim, and they have to redo their drawings and bring them back to us. <clears throat> and that's it. Wendy. Okay. Um, yeah, just briefly here it said at the September 5th, 2019 City Commission meeting, after a very brief discussion, we made the decision to reduce the hours paid out on sick leave to our city employees. We agreed to cap hours paid out to three years of sick time not to exceed 288 hours. While I understand this decision was made to prevent a possible negative impact to the city's budget, this decision has negatively impacted many of our employees. It affects their financial planning, and I'm sure it has not helped with workplace morale, which we know is already low. Our staff is small, and they need to know that we value them and do not take decisions like this lightly. I would like to see this section of the personnel policies and procedures opened up for more discussion and possible revision. If we talk and think this through together, I feel we can come up with a better alternative to what we voted on and passed at our last meeting. Um, uh, I just, it's really difficult, and this isn't an easy job. And um, I think people don't understand totally what this job entails. They don't always in, in understand what their role is. Um, we don't just hire a city manager to just go do things and, and vote whatever. If, if our point was to vote whatever was put in front of us, then you wouldn't need this board. You're here to question things. You're here to research the stuff to make sure that the city is on the right track. You're here to do a very difficult job. And if you start putting all these pressures in about, well, you can't ask for information because so-and-so doesn't like that you're asking for the information, then you can't do your job. And we each have our own job to do, and each of us is going to do that job the way we feel is necessary. I've been involved in this a long time. I learned long ago from my mom, Rita Roerig, most people know her. She was on the board a long time. She was a city manager. She was a supervisor, a treasurer. My mom had done it all, and she was very thorough and good at it. And she always asked questions. She always went to the nth degree to make sure that the people of this community were looked after and protected. Because our job is to them also. It's not just to certain people. It's to everybody in this community. So you need to be careful um, with certain things. And when you have certain jobs, you're always going to have those conflicts. That's just part of the job. When you have a code enforcement person, that job is a difficult job, yes. And nobody's going to like it when they get their letter in the mail. But um, you can't just tie the hands of the commission because you don't like how the questions asked. Everybody has a right to ask those questions. I remember one time they, um, I think it was the one board, wanted to throw my mom off because she asked a lot of questions and the lawyer finally ruled she has the right to ask those questions, so therefore you can't do anything about it. I mean, that's part of this job. That's part of our job. And I will continue to do my job and look after the people that contact me on a regular basis and I will always come and bring all my stuff to you. You know that. I bring it to everything. I never go to your department heads. I never, that's not the process. The process is we take our information, we take it to our city manager, and the city manager takes it to the department head. That's how it's dealt. So that's the rule of thumb. So all I'm saying is just be careful what you wish for, but it's a difficult job, and I know the way I do my job, I'm going to keep doing it the way I see it needs to be done. Thanks. Um, just again, Wendy somewhat stole my thunder, just to hear what she said. I believe we need to take another look at the uh, sick leave policy, not to get into it right now, but at a future meeting, I think it needs to be brought up again. Okay. 
And you actually had to look into legalistic part of it too, correct? Yeah, I, I think that um, following that meeting, I uh, did on my own contact the city manager and raised the issue that we both believe that the, the, the lawyer who wrote the manual needs to make sure that we're not jumping onto somebody's rights. And so I, I think what I'm hearing is you want that brought back as an agenda item at a future meeting. Is that what I hear, Wendy? Yes. Am I hearing you right? You're hearing me right. Okay. So I'll work with the city manager on that. Okay. Uh, yeah. I know we've got Comic Con on it in a week because if I don't mention it. So what goes on at that? Can, can you tell me? At Comic Con? Yeah. Weirdness. We have an expert right here. Oh, I'll talk to him after. <laughs> You sure you don't want to enlighten us, Paul? What's it, what, us? what happens? Oh. What happens at Comic Con? Yeah, enlighten us. Well, there's um, stays at Comic Con. You stay. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we have a full agenda, which is up on our Facebook page at this point. But it's running from uh, 11 to 4, and I think we have something going on every hour. Everything oh. from uh, uh, we have Dan Phillips, who is a um, He's won awards for his makeup artistry, so he's looking for a model to do some makeup on. So, um, Bob, if you're willing, he could <laughs> he could maybe transform you into. I just want hair. Okay, yeah, I, I think he can do that. He can do that. Yeah. A hippie get you into a hippie. Uh, so we've got Ghostbusters come in, or uh, the southeastern Ghostbusting teams, and they're going to show us some of their paranormal ca um, things that they've captured. Um, we've got uh, a Marvel il illustrator coming, uh, Marvel, or, um, Marvel Jones. Um, we have our traveling um, street magician who will be putting on a, a magician show for us later on for the kids. Um, it is all family friendly, so even though it is Comic Con and there are some weirdness, it, all, it, is, all, it is all geared for kids and fun. Free, and it is mm -hmm. free. Mm -hmm. um, That's a good word. Yeah. yeah. Good four letter word. Yeah. And. Um, it's just going to be a lot of fun. It, it always has been for the last four years that it's been going on. It's just been brings a lot of people to downtown, um, and just in in the city per se. And um, it's just it's just a neat day to, you know, just bring your geek out. So. All right, thank you. You're your inner welcome. geek. I like that. Yeah, your geek out. Your geek out. Well, I'll have to. You know, we've got Pumpkin Palooza coming up in the the week following that. So, right. and uh, Eric and I did a. Uh, interview today on one of the Christian radio stations and yeah there was no lightning bolts we were safe <laughs> it was good with me uh, and I was well behaved Chris so I didn't drop any four-letter words so um, it was a it was a good interview um, we've added some things to it we've got a, uh, a haunted park mm -hmm. and we have a pub crawl a zombie pub crawl this year so Straw bale contest. Yeah, we have the straw bale contest and see who's going to win that because there's some innovative ideas going around. <laughs> With that, can I get a motion to adjourn? Make a motion to adjourn. Support. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Scary. <laughs>